All right, gang, why most traders fail? I don't know if you ever wondered about this, but it's called random reinforcement. Random reinforcement. Trader attributes uh, a random outcome to a skill or lack of skill. And by this I mean the market occasionally rewards bad habits and punishes good habits because the market is dynamic. It's always fluid. It's always moving, and sometimes you get on a, on a real tear, and you can make some really great trades. You don't even know why, but you're on a roll, right? And other times, even though you might think you're really great, uh, you might, you know, suddenly, geez, I don't, I don't get it. I can't, I can't make any money to save my life. You just have one bad trade after another. Random reinforcement. Um, this is especially negative if you, if a new trader wins a few trades. With no plan whatsoever, they attribute this success to intuition. If you're a new trader, you have a lot of trades, you think, well, I must have a knack for it, right? I must be good. I didn't even realize I'm good. Suddenly, I'm making all this money. And it can also hurt veteran traders who experience a string of losses, and they believe they no longer possess a skill. All right. So this is this is an, uh, an interesting concept, but random reinforcement. So we... Um, we want to, to, to we want to make sure that we don't really trade in a random mode. All right, we're trying to uh, we're trying to get skill rather than randomness. Randomness can create strings of losses and great trading plans and strings of profits and poor trading plans. Neither of which is actually good. Therefore, we need well researched planned entries and exits. This is paramount to good trading. Okay, and we need superior money management techniques superior money management techniques and um, by this I mean no matter what absolutely you, you must have excellent money management techniques that are gonna far super you know far surpass your your emotions your everything because without good manage without excellent man money management techniques you're, you're not gonna be in the game long they say what 90 95 percent who even knows that number I would suspect it's probably about 98% of traders fail and they, they exit this business in the first year simply because they lose all their money. And they say, this is not for me. All right. And that's very true. And I don't know about you, but I've myself, I have actually quit about a dozen times, <laughs> but I kept coming back because I knew, I knew deep in my heart there's money in this business. I just have to figure out how to get my fair share out of the market. So that's, uh, and money management is going to keep you in this business for longer and longer and longer. And if you get through that first year, year and a half, two years, then you're actually well on the way to making some pretty good money in the market, as long as you can remain to be careful, right? As long as you remain uh, to be careful with, with your money. Um, you also need to recognize that markets are fluid, all right? They're always dynamic and losses are inevitable. All right. There's a, there, all traders will lose from time to time. There's no trader in the world uh, that never loses. And if anybody ever tells you they never lose, they are lying to you. They're simply lying to you. Um, well, they got their head in the sand and they don't recognize their losses. I get this one gentleman I talked to quite a bit. It's actually pretty funny. Uh, he he does he does spreads. Great guy. I know him personally. We've been friends forever. He likes to do uh, stra straddles, straddles, strangles, and uh, it's hilarious because he'll he'll tell me I, I'm up forty percent on my calls. He says to me, and I said, and how are your puts doing? <laughs> well, we don't want to talk about that. Oh, you don't want to talk about that? Oh, okay, all right. So the next day, oh, I'm up fifty percent on my puts. I said, oh, how are your calls doing? Oh, not good. And then he quickly, you know, <laughs> whisks that under the, the carpet, right? <laughs> we're not, we're not going to talk about the losers. And I'm wondering, how is he still in business? Uh, but um, he's, uh, he's chugging along, and, uh, and uh, somehow he, uh, he remains in, in the business. But I know he's got lots of money, so I think he does it for fun because he's an elderly gentleman, and I know he's got a lot of money. So <laughs> I think he's just doing it for fun. Folks, the other thing is, is you got to recognize that markets are fluid, and the best approach here and with, with, uh, with the losses and the best approach here is to replace that randomness with a proven strategy. And, uh, and I, I don't know about you. I mean, when I started in this business, and again, I'm not saying this works for everybody. It works really, really well for me. But uh, when, when I started, uh, and, and, you know, maybe it was the times, maybe everything was going up at that time. Maybe everything was going down. But, you know, we'd have string of successes and we think we're actually pretty good at this, right? And then suddenly you're hit with a, 
uh, with, with a horrible loss. You wonder what just went wrong. How could this happen to me? How can the market treat me so poorly? Uh, I've been so loyal to the market. And, you know, I just start asking all these crazy questions. But we want to replace this randomness with a proven strategy that works. Okay. Why most traders fail? I'm going to ask you a question here. All right. Uh, a lot of it has to do with competence versus confidence. And I find that, and in a lot of my studies, and don't forget now, I do a lot of training, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of group sessions, a lot of, I have talked to thousands of people over the years, thousands, uh, in, in all kinds of environments. I'm not saying this in any arrogant, bragging way. Please don't get me wrong when I say this, but I, I've, I've studied a lot of traders and their behaviors and their, their backgrounds and different things to see what makes a great trader. What, you know, and, and I think I can recognize now when a trader, if I talk to somebody probably the next you know, first few minutes, I can generally tell if they're gonna be successful or not. Uh, but I'm gonna just uh, throw this out here, competence versus confidence in traders. Um, there are a lot of co uh, confidence, confident people out there, a lot of confident people out there, but does that make them competent? Um, I had a little segment on on um, trading rooms, and I cut that off because I didn't want to kind of take your time with a lot of that. But I just briefly, I don't know if I, I'll even mention this a little bit. I mean, I've been in many trading rooms in the past, many years ago, and I found that the uh, most confident person who speaks in a trading room is the one who's going to attract all the attention. And I remember being in one trading room, this one gentleman uh, who, who was sort of the de facto leader. He really wasn't the head of the group, but because he was such a charismatic gentleman uh, and everybody loved loved him. And whenever he spoke, everybody would just gravitate to whatever he said. And uh, and I remember one day on one stock, he said, oh my gosh, it's going down, sell, sell, sell. So everybody instantly just sold, sold, sold. And those people who... Um, those people who uh, who stayed the course and did not sell, the market turned around and went back up, and they're the ones that made money. That's when I realized, uh oh, that's not really working too well. Folks, most traders are actually confident, in fact, overconfident in their abilities. And I think it's just the nature of traders. If you think about it, we're actually very independent of thought. We are risk takers, right? We like to go out on a limb. We're probably very independent in our, you know, a lot of us have are very successful in our other lives. You know, a lot of us are in business, right? We're presidents of, a lot of presidents and company CEOs, um, a, lot, a lot of people. I mean, I've got people from all demographics, all walks of life, all geographical locations around the world. We have them here, but I find there has to be a certain level of confidence to be a good trader, but there's also this thing about being overconfident. So I am going to, I am going to, uh, and thanks for that, George. Uh, believe it or not, no, I was not at Woodstock, <laughs> but thanks anyway. Oh, uh, my good friend, George. There. Here's a quiz, quiz, folks. I'm going to give you this quiz. This is going to be a quick, a quick, quick quiz. Quick quiz. Can you say it? A ball and a bat cost a dollar ten. The bat costs one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Please answer this in the questions box, and do it quickly. Okay, do it quickly because I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer this. All right, bat and the ball cost a dollar ten. The bat costs a dollar more than the ball. How much is the ball? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds here. Folks, you got to answer it in the in the questions box. Just put it in the questions box. All right, we're gonna we're gonna slow it down a little bit. We are gonna slow it down. We're gonna get another few seconds here. Okay, they're all coming in. Unbelievable, they're all coming in. All right. Three, two, one. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Look at all those brilliant answers. <laughs> okay. All right. Should I leave this on one more for, for 10 more seconds? 10 more seconds, folks. Five, no, 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Show the question again. Okay, show the question again. I'll show the question one more time. All right, this one's for you, Al. A ball and a bat. Bat and a ball cost a dollar ten together. You buy them together, it's a dollar ten. The bat costs one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Okay. Okay. All right. I think everybody's answered. 
I'm going to skip along here now, tell you the answer. By the way, I mentioned, I asked this question, um, I asked this question the uh, the other day on our in our trading room, and I said, I'll give you the answer here today. The answer is actually five cents. The answer is five cents. The reason I'm throwing this out here now, most people came in, and I love to, I'd love to show you this, but unfortunately I can't, but uh, a lot of people said, uh, yes, George, you got it right. Uh, TM got it right. Da, da, da. Dan O got it right. And a lot of people got it wrong. <laughs> okay. Most people got it wrong. Okay. So, so here's the thing, right? Let me think about it. If the ball is five cents and the, uh, that, that, and the bat's a dollar more, then that's a dollar five, dollar five plus five, there's your dollar ten. But here's the key. Did that surprise you? Most people, believe it or not, get it wrong because they trust their initial instincts more than they should. They did a test on this. I don't know when it was. I actually got this out of a book, but the uh, the book said they did a they did a, a, a test of uh, Harvard, Princeton, and uh, MIT students, and even fifty percent of those students uh, got it wrong. They came up with the wrong answer. They came up with ten cents, and that's what would probably be the, uh, the sort of the logical quick answer, right? But here's the thing, traders are so confident in their intuition that they and we, and I say they, I'm not saying they, I'm, thinking, I'm putting myself into this group too. Uh, and I'm going to change that right now because uh, I have to go back to this slide. All right, I had some help on these slides. So that we, I'm in this group, we don't even bother checking whether our answer is right before we throw it out there. And sometimes that can actually come back and hurt us. So let me change this slide too, because there's no day, it's we. And if we don't bother to check our logic with brain teasers, then think of how unlikely we are to do it on a spontaneous trading decision where the answer seems much more related to our gut feeling than any logical principle. Think about that for a sec. How many of us ever traded just on gut feeling? Well, I think it's gonna go up. I think it's gonna go down, I think. The market doesn't care what we think, right? So we have to really, and this is, and I think this is one of the big reasons that I failed a lot back in my day is because uh, I thought, I thought too much. Well, it made sense to me, whatever the thought was. Well, you know, there's no sound basis to that thinking and what I thought. Um, and, uh, and, and sometimes I was right. But a lot of times I was wrong. And I thought, wow, how could the market not think that way? <laughs> okay. And then I realized the market is just accumulation. It's just the, uh, the masses, the, what, what the masses, uh, you know, think. And maybe they're not thinking the way I'm thinking. So there used to be, and I'm going to give it a quick example here, just uh, stuff that comes off the top of my head. Might be a lot of anecdotes that I kind of throw out there, you know, in that regard. Um, I remember years ago, when um, when companies were paring down and you'd hear, you know, you'd see all these news reports, such and such a company is laying off 10,000 people. This company is laying off 5,000 people. And this big company, you know, we're, we're, we're laying off 28,000 people, you know, and all these massive layoffs and firings. And, uh, and you think that, my gosh, this keeps up. This company is going to go out of business. And yet, what happened to the stock of the company? It would shoot up. It would shoot up. It would shoot up. I said, I, I don't understand this. How could this be? Well, why were they going to fire everybody and the market's going to, the stock's going to go to the, to the moon? That logic didn't seem to resonate with me and I, I couldn't understand it. But I would never trade in that regard because I never really knew how could this be. So, I mean, that's just one aspect of things. But that's the thing there. We don't really take our. Um, our, our, um, our decisions to, you know, to the next level. A lot of us just use gut feelings. So I guess, is it any wonder that most traders fail miserably? And I think that's good news for us because their losses can be our gains if we figure out what they're doing and we do something different. And I think that's, that's a key, that's a key uh, to, to winning in this business. Because if most traders are gonna throw their money in and they're gonna be out of this business in a year, well, they're going to lose their money. I'm sorry, they're going to lose their money. But if they're going to give their money, they might as well give it to me. That's kind of the way I look at it. And to, to our people, right? <laughs> to the people that are with us. So we might as well take their money. 
Uh, but their losses can be our gains, and that's what I'm actually finding is that when we um, we have uh, we have gains, and then some people have losses. We have uh, you know, and, and their gains. Um, we we tend to make some pretty good good money out of the uh, out of their losses here. I don't believe it's a zero sum game trading options because options can go up and up and up and then they expire worthless. Uh, they say they say by far most options do expire worthless. So folks, don't be like most traders. Don't overestimate your abilities. Don't have that gut feeling that you think. Okay. In fact, what you need to do is learn to trade using a strategy that fits your style. 